Welcome everyone in this new video live development about building an auto battle game. In this video we're going to start doing some more uh, funny stuff, fancy stuff, because uh, in this video we're going to retain the information about team color and team ID and, brought and bring them in the in-game map uh, in order to start building the rest of the game logic when players are going to fight etc. So we're going to retrieve their team color ID and and store the proper the proper stuff. So, but first we need to to fix some errors. So in the in-game map, uh, you might this might not be working for you, and that's because in the project settings, in the map and modes, uh, in here I think you have known reference and you want to set uh, in-game mode. And when you do this, you're supposed to game is supposed to work uh, like it was before so uh, that's one thing so but first let's uh, just think about so I updated the tech design a bit and it's gonna be a tech design auto battle um, auto, auto chess game it's gonna be named like this so we now have we now have an in-game state a score screen a score screen player entry and an in-player controller which is going to create the score screen and the game instance is going to store information about our players and the in-game state is going to retrieve that information when it spawns and the out-game state is going to tell the game instance that it's uh, on server the out-game state is going to store the information of the player on the game instance because the game instance persists through levels so we're going to need to store the different information about different players and we're going to display them in a score screen uh, when we arrive in game score screen which is going to use our which is going to be a child class of our player board and the same goes for the score screen player entry which is going to be a child class of player entry so it's going to be I think it's going to be easy to create that logic because of the way we built the rest of the logic so that's that's a good thing a good thing uh, so first I think we need to make sure that we have the proper um, the required uh, class blueprint class and I can see it's not the case since we don't have an in-player state so we're going to create a new BP in-player state which we're going to, pu to put in our in-game folder and we're also going to need in the game system we're going to need an in-game state which we're going to create right away BP, BP in-game states like this put that in here and uh, do we have the controller? yeah we do so the controller is going to open up our oh we have a bunch of stuff in here when we left mouse button oh yeah 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 it handles the um, create main HUD in-game HUD so I think we're going to, going to put our score screen in the main HUD so let's go to the widgets in game we're going to create a new user interface which is going to, to be WGT score screen and we're going to open that up and we're going to make that a chai class of player board like this we're going to go in there create a new folder called score screen and actually we're going to move our score screen in here we're going to delete score panel which is not used, we created it um, preemptively. So we have a shop and in-game ad in and a score screen and we're going to need a child class of player entry which is going to be a WGT score screen entry like this. So how, I how is this going to be set up? Uh, it's going to be of the desired size, it's going to be um, uh, we're going to build it in such a way that uh, we can make some stuff uh, we are free to update it uh, in many different ways ways so it's going to be it's going to be like 100 wide and s and height and we're going to have like I don't know an image in the overlay we're going to have like a name and I guess a team ID so another text so this is going to be text team it's going to be real small and at the bottom middle it's going to be like 12 in the bottom I said middle like 
12 is going to be light, uh, maybe even it italic, and we're going to move that a bit down like this. So, so this is team number one, and we're going to have a text which is player name, and it's going to be like in the middle. It's going to be much smaller uh, with the light pol f uh, light typeface like this, or maybe maybe like like this. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to make that auto wrap text at 80. Unplug that, compile at 60, at 70, I meant 60. So this is going to be a bit bigger, like this. Okay, not, not like this. Like that. And the player name is auto wrapping, and we don't want that. We want to be auto wrapping like at at like 100, and this is going to be the color. So actually, the color um, or for now it's going to be the color. It's going to be like this with a padding of five, like 10 on the top, and we're going to need the amount of else uh, also. So this is going to be the team. We're going to put else above that. So another text, text. Else, else, like this, it's gonna be in the middle. It's gonna be small as well, uh, bold actually. Like 30. Oh uh, no, I mean like a little bit of padding. Like this, maybe. Uh, uh, actually, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna add like a border. I'm not sure to remember how. Okay, yeah, we need to put the overlay in the border. Like this, I think. Uh, I don't quite remember. I don't quite remember. how we can do this I'm a bit sad so I want the border to only take a round and I don't quite remember how to do this but for now so for now we're just going to put an image like at the top the image is going to be like real small like five is going to take all the top and it's going to have the color of the player and we're going to get rid of this so this is going to be t uh, image team color like this and uh, we're, we're going to put that in the middle without yep without any anything uh, we're going to remove the translation on that we're going to make that like red and a little bit bigger with an outline maybe I don't know <laughs> that's pretty that's not pretty I meant like this okay okay we're gonna add a shadow just because we can like this okay so we have our player entry in the score screen and I think we need what do we need now we're gonna add a, l a little bit of padding just so yeah like this so what can we add now in the main add in game add we need to add our score screen like this it's gonna take the wall it's gonna use anything it needs uh, actually we're gonna size to content and make that 
on the on the left. It's gonna be located on the left. One and point five. Actually, let, just for the sake of yeah, figuring out where to put that, like this size to content. So we have a score screen which we're going to edit, and we're gonna open up our multiplayer lobby just to see how we need to set that up return to main menu we don't need that on player joined we want to create player entries and we want to bind ourselves to the game set we're just going to copy that close close things and only keep like our score screen if we paste that yeah we need to recall them so bind to game states like this so we want to cast to in-game state in here just in case we need to bind ourselves to it and we we will indeed need that eventually so what do we want to do here we want to do on player left so when a player leaves it's going to remove its entry from the board maybe we'll we'll need to override that behavior afterwards in the future because we may we might want to just display the fact that they left and not remove their entry so we're also going to call uh, on player joined and we want to create player entry which is a score screen parent widget we are in the score screen so uh, we're going to remove that, make that desired size. I, I'd like just a vertical box and maybe a size box. The size box is going to be like 200 wide. So I guess if we open up our in-game HUD, we're going to see the um, our score screen is now 100 wide. And so we have a vertical box which is going to be VBox player entries like this. So we want to create a score screen entry. Uh, the player state is going to be that one. The parent widget is going to be the VBox player entries. So it should do something right away if we hit play. Yeah, we have three player entries now. So this is the beginning of. Uh, of something uh, we can I can tell right now that it's far too big uh, it's not at the proper size it's not at the desired size I guess that's because I think that's because I'm not using the the logic that I'm supposed to use so the size box get size box we want to get rid of this we want to make the size box a variable and we want to plug that in here we hit play it's still not the right size I guess that's because we are adding them yeah 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 yeah. okay I know why that's because we are using a size box in there and we don't want that we want to get rid of this in the score screen if we hit play yeah it's gonna have the desired size now and we we'd, we'd like to do some kind of actually it's a little bit it's going to be a little bit moved on the right like minus point one and we also want to say that whenever we create an entry we're going to modify its padding uh, maybe get the slot as vertical box slots and set its padding like this make and we want to add a padding on the bottom on the bottom and on the top I guess we're going to like add 10 and 10 yeah it's a little bit better but we d we're not having any team color whatsoever for now so in the player in the score screen entry we're also going to open up our lobby player entry we're going to check what kind of stuff we do in here and we're going to add some comments set local state what do we want to do if if this is the local player set team and team color 
binds to player states and uh, set checkbox um, react to checkbox events like this so there is a system to switch uh, color which is automatically being called when needed because this is bound so this is so we just have to override this set color even set color and set team even set team and what do we want to do here we want to set at the team color the team color is of that color and we also want to set that team set text is that text so we're gonna see a changes right away so we are we don't have any color that's because I think that's because we are receiving because if we don't set the team color of the players it's going to be the default value in the player state so the player state in here team color it's so the any color I put here is gonna appear when we hit play yep that's it so the default color will be will be like a bug a bugged one like this so we're gonna see yeah so there is an error we should not have that color and so th that's because we never actually modify team color and that's okay and we we are all of the team zero that's okay as well so how are we gonna do this now so the score screen entry is there so we actually need to store that information somehow and we should have though we should have the name of the players and we don't and that's mainly because I forgot to get player to override get player name text get player name text we're gonna put that here and plug that here hit play yeah and we're having some large large player names uh, for now we won't care about that and we're just gonna modify something about this just to better see I uh, will we'll see how we do oh yeah yeah I know what we'll be doing uh, if it's set local state we're gonna override th this in the score screen entry team um, text player name no text team we want to set outline okay we can't set the outline like this so we're just gonna build a little logic to set the outline of text are we gonna do this really set fonts we need to do this get fonts so we're not gonna build um, an overall logic we're just gonna do this for now make outline I mean make fonts break fonts we want to plug everything but the outline we want to make so when it when the local state is, is set up we want to say that there is an outline of two and the outline is gonna be green so if we hit play uh, no okay no nothing is set and that's because I think we forgot to set up something so if we open up our in-game mod so we don't have an in-game mod uh, actually yeah we do I know we do so our in-game mod mode is gonna use our in-game states and our in-player states we're gonna hit compile save hit play and it still doesn't work so why is it not why don't we have this this should be working I think font outline settings we don't have any so if we put like two outline and make it green do we see that yeah we, we, uh, we definitely see that so maybe this is never cold we'll see if it's being cold
Uh, it's actually never... Ah uh, yeah, that's because... I think that's because our in-game controller does nothing when it should be. Yeah, that's because we're not calling our parent begin play. So the logic of the... So in parent begin play, in the player, uh, in the player controller, in begin play we are check for local player state and we, since we were not calling the parent begin play, it wasn't calling that. And we want that, so if we hit play, one of them is gonna be, yeah, green. Okay, that sounds okay. So it's ugly, but at least it's working. So now we need the out game player game state, the out game state to store information when it comes to loading to starting the game. So start game. The server before sending this is gonna get the game instance. So that's where we're gonna need the stuff we created, which we do not use anymore. That this. So where is used the player values in the game state and in the player entry? We're just going to open that up real quick and get rid of these get rid of these so I think in the player entry where do we use the values break pl player values players on player state values changed are we ever calling this never so we're just gonna get rid of that hit compile and look for values once more we're never using them anymore in there and where are we using this? On player values changed. We should not be calling this anymore. Yep. So we can delete that as well. Like this, hit compile, save. Go back to the out game, to, th to the utility folder of our player. Is it being called? It's never used. So we're going to open that up. Uh, it's going to be F uh, network player, I guess open that up and we're going to remove everything but team color and team id it's save compile save save whole e save all ear save all ear and in there remove player statue so it's asking for a, a remo hard removal which we're going to do like this can we delete that now yeah but we won't so the game st the game instance it's gonna have a variable which is player um, traveling players which is going to be a map of string and a network player like this so when you create a session it's going to clear that like this we want to clear that when we create a new session and we're going to add a bunch of comments just so we can clearly see what's going on in there without zooming too much and we don't want that as well we don't want that I want to uh, we want to fix that. Are we ever calling this? No, we're not so we're going we're going to call this. Like this, we want to clear that. Find game success. We want to do this. Oh yeah, we haven't done that because it was returning no values will, will be returned by reference and that's okay we don't want uh, I was thinking it was a bug but it's not uh, it means we cannot uh, alter we can only read that information when we retrieve that and that's okay and this is not going to be an out player state it's going to be an out player controller it's going to be a player controller just we're going to remove that do it like this so hit compile remove this so we cannot remove the two for now because we need to open up our multiplayer lobby. Uh, 
and no it was uh, in the server browser browser so in here I think fill servers where are we calling that already I forgot find games dispatch and click so it's in the out game menu so that's fine so we're search game in here yeah we indeed want to find games but first we want to remove that too now we can hit compile hit save go back to the out game menu so when we click on search game so it's named find game not search find games in button click that one so are we using the game instance here should we be yeah get game instance ref so we created one so we're going to so that's a shame that we're doing this in here it should not th it should not start the search it should just show the um, multiplayer lobby i guess so in the multiplayer lobby we're going to have so is it written on our tech design multiplayer lobby it communicates with the game instance and that sounds logical so we're gonna have a new function called show oh no not the multiplayer lobby my bad that's not wha what we want lobby browser new function show browser so the out game menu when we click on find games it's not gonna f find it's not gonna do this find games it's just gonna get the lobby browser and say show lo show browser like this bind refresh lobby browser that is the same thing we don't want that we want to bind this in the lobby browser itself so we're gonna get rid of this on refresh browser clicked we want to get rid of this apparently uh, in the event graph we want to get rid of this we want to hit compile show multiplayer lobby if needed where are we using this already yeah create game okay okay that's okay show browser what does the browser do uh, when you show it, when you show it, it's set visible. It changes its visibility to self it test invisible, like this. Show, so it shows the browser. It gets the game instance. Where we are actually going to make him handle the game instance by himself. Uh, so I guess it's gonna cast. and is gonna search uh, find games whose player controller is gonna be it's gonna be our own and it's gonna bind itself to the fact that on find game complete cr create event uh, fill server I guess we want that fill servers like this so when we show the browser it start the search I guess we want to put that in start searching games like this so we are showing the browser we are starting to search for games and what does it do now so we want to go back to our out game map so sorry but it's it's just way better to do it this way so we want to do that so if I create a game there if I find the game it's searching yeah and we never do anything when it finishes the search yeah we do 
Okay, so it works the same way it worked before. But we cannot hit refresh, I guess. Yeah, it does nothing, but we can join. And we have the proper color. So the lobby browser needs to make it so dispatch on click on the refresh button we act what do we actually want to do so we have twice that event and we don't want that so when we hit the button refresh we want to start searching for games so what does it do create find and find so we cannot hit the refresh button we cannot hit it. We can join, can return, we can find games, it's searching once more. So yep, we just edited the logic and it was and it's way better now. So we've done that. Where were we? We were asking for traveling players. So the out game state is gonna get the game instance like this and in the game instance I guess we're gonna have some kind of function named store traveling players which is going to take an array of player state as parameter in players like this and we're gonna loop through that and we're gonna add one entry whoops one entry to this map for each of the player we have so like this get color get team ID so we're gonna have this which we are clearing when we create a game, that's fine. Store traveling players. And we're gonna get online players in there. So now the server has so doing this makes it so the server has the proper information when it's when it arrives. So we just need no, w when it arrives in game. We need we just need to make it so the the in game states gets it and tells the player what is is new uh, their their what is their stats their team color and id so when a player joins we want to make it so we're do only doing this on authority and we want the, to set their team color and set team id and we want to get the game instance and we want to cast it into our own game instance like this and we want to find uh, we want to, uh, um, I'm sorry we want to get traveling players we want to find in there we want to find the player having that name like this and we want to break we want to plug that in here So if we hit play, we are in the lobby, I mean we are in the menu, the server is going to create a game, everybody gonna connect. Like this, we are going to say to the world that we are ready, the game is about to start and I think it's gonna work right away, we are gonna have the proper colors. yeah 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 we're having the colors in there the proper n players are alive so this seems like we are properly storing the information oh my cat is mowing really loud really loudly so we want to we want to go in our dev map but what happens if we hit play there it's it's not working so how to make it work there we can have some kind of cheat code where in the game instance we actually add a bunch of stuff out oh, now we cannot because we can't we can't give them give them the proper name 
So we need some kind of cheat code which puts them in a different in different um, teams just for the sake of the, the sake of taste testing so we're gonna do this if we don't we don't find the information we're looking for if we if we find it okay if we don't find it we're gonna get we're gonna store uh, give them a random uh, not random but we're gonna give them we're gonna re-give them the same thing we've done for the out game states So when a player joins, we are giving him its, his team ID. And I guess we only need to set that because when we set the team ID, it actually set as well the color. So I think we don't even need to set the team, I, uh, the team color here. And in there, we don't need as well, we just need and we only want to do this on server as well yeah yeah that's that's it so we don't need this we just need get online players get lens oh, lens like this so we've already stored it so if we hit play we're going to have different teams so that's that's working so if we're not coming from the game instance, uh, if, the g if we're not coming from the menu, we are dynamically generating the, the team and that's okay. So I think it's going to wrap up that video. We are carrying information from the outgame menu to the in-game uh, to to in and it's, uh, it's working quite well. We can start working on the in-game part of the game, which is kind of a good news because it we were uh, we we were stuck on the out game menu for a while now so i hope you guys enjoyed that video and i hope to see you in the next one bye bye